Yo, what's poppin' Team Dink? Over the past year, I have overhauled my fishing lineup. Honestly, I've pretty much sold all of my old rods and reels, and I've bought pretty much all new stuff. I've been fishing the same year for a long time, and it was quite frankly time that I spoiled myself. Now, I just sold an old G. Loomis rod and a Shimano reel, so I had a little bit of cash come in, and I'm thinking, Ethan, go buy yourself a new rod and reel. So I hopped on Discount Tackle, I started browsing their site, and I found a casting reel for $55, and I'm like, you know what? I wanna try that. It got me thinking about the fact that I haven't used a budget baitcaster in quite some time, so I wanted to see how well these things perform in today's age, because the last time that I spent less than $100 on a casting reel was many, many years ago, and so maybe these reels have gotten a lot better. So ultimately, today's plan is to cast this puppy around. It's pretty windy out, that's why I'm hiding behind a bunch of bushes. The wind will honestly be a great test on whether or not this reel is worth a hoot, because if you can't cast in the wind effectively, then the baitcaster should not be used. That's my opinion, I'm from Kansas, there's a lot of wind, in Kansas, but ultimately I feel like you got to be able to cast in the wind to get your money's worth. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. This is a Daiwa CC80. It's a nice looking casting reel. I've been playing around with it for the last couple days, and quite frankly I've already cut a couple fish on it, so you can watch those now. There he is. Oh my gosh, it's a big old pike. Are you kidding me? Oh no, he's got it down his throat. No, he doesn't, it's on the side of his head. It's a big old pike right there. Much larger a fish than expected. It's kind of a hard place to land them. Have to get down there and get dirty. Oh man, he's thrashing. Old buddy. I was not expecting a big old chunky pike like that. I'll take it, man. All right. Jerk bait to the uh, face right there. All right, nice pike. All right, buddy, back to it. Excellent. This is 10 pound fluorocarbon, so I have my drag set relatively easy to where they can pull just a little bit. You know, the drag was really smooth. Came out, it didn't like jolt out. It came out nice and smooth. So this reel handled that beautifully. So did the rod. Oh, daggummit. How did I miss that fish? There he is. He came back for it. I guarantee that's the same fish. I just missed one a second ago. Oh wow, got a little fight in him. Gotta love a pre-spawn chunk. Look at them lips he's got. Man, I love jerkbait fishing. All right, oh, hooks just came right out. Chunky little pre-spawn fish right there. I love it. See, buddy. Gotta love catching fish while you're just testing a reel, man. So far, I don't think I've drawn a conclusion and that's why we're here today. I'm really gonna try to break this thing down and try to figure out whether or not I like it. And then at the end of this video, I will draw a conclusion and determine whether or not this thing is worth $55. I got this clown colored Strike King jerk bait rigged up. Hopefully it works, but man, that water is really dirty. I was not expecting that. Now on the side, there's a very, very simple braking system. You've got free all the way to max and you can just click that around. Now we're gonna start on max and I can cast that a whopping like 20 feet. So obviously I never really set any casting reel to max breaks. I don't see how you could ever effectively fish in a max break situation, but I guess it's good they have that just for practice sake. So I'm gonna go ahead and back it off to about halfway. And again, I still don't get very much distance at halfway, but at least it's enough to fish. You'll notice that I don't have near enough line on here, and I'm gonna be completely honest with you. The other day while I was testing it, I was really pushing this thing, and I cast it directly into the wind really hard on really low brake settings, and I had a mad backlash. I cast it directly into the wind here. That's a big no-no. And I had to cut out a bunch of line, but I'm just gonna keep testing it with the line that I have on there. This line is 10 pound Sunline fluorocarbon. It's their low level one. I think it's the super. I back this off a little bit. It's probably about a third of the way from free. You know, that was a good amount of distance for being a third of the way down on my brakes. And if we open up the side, I'm gonna do it over the dock so that way I don't drop this thing in the water. Very basic on the inside, really nothing going on there. The only form of brakes on this reel is this right here. There's nothing on the inside. Just snap that back, click it into place, and it is locked. Hence the name, this is a size 80 reel, so it's pretty small. That's why I put 10 pound fluorocarbon on it. This rod that I picked up is actually what I'm going to be using a lot for jerk baits and then small crank baits and that sort of thing. And so I really just wanted something pretty small and something comfortable in my hand that fit 10 pound fluorocarbon well. I'd say this is doing the job quite well. Um, it's very comfortable. No complaints as far as just like cosmetics and how it feels in my hand. 
One thing I actually do really like for the 55 bucks is I actually like the handle. I like the grips too. They feel pretty nice. I mean, for being something that's definitely cheap, they feel comfortable. There was a nice long cast with the wind. Casting with the wind should never be an issue, but it's good to just make a lot of casts. Anytime you're trying to form an impression on a reel, it just comes down to cast it a lot, fish it a lot, and see what happens. And honestly, that's what I've been trying to do. You know, these last couple of days, I haven't really been focused on making a video. I threw the GoPro on my chest, so just in case I caught fish, I could document that. But ultimately, my main goal was to just put this thing to the test. It's been super windy here for the last week, and so it's been a great week to test this thing. I'm not gonna put it all the way down on free, but I'll put it right there. I would say it's probably about one eighth of the way. Sometimes these dials have like one, two, three, four, five, that sort of thing. This one doesn't. I don't think that's the end of the world, but I do kind of like it to do that because then it's easier to remember. Oh man, I get so much more distance, but I got a little bit of backlash. Oh my gosh. Okay, that wasn't bad. Honestly, that wasn't bad. I got a lot of distance on that. Let's go test our current settings out and try to cast directly into the wind. I guess I haven't even talked about what rod I picked up to go with it. This is a six foot nine Shimano Intenza. This is a medium powered rod. It is a fast action. I got this, like I said, specifically for jerk baits and small hard baits. Now's the moment of truth. I'm casting directly into the wind now. Now I held back on that cast, but I did okay. I had my thumb on that line pretty much the whole time. And there you have it. There we've got some backlash there. It obviously doesn't help that I don't have enough line on here. Um, the other thing is, like I said, this is 10 pound fluorocarbon. This is on the low side. You know, when it comes to a budget bait caster, I wouldn't expect it to handle lower diameter line quite as well as a higher end bait caster. Okay, there's two in a row with a little bit of backlash. This wind is definitely affecting this reel more when you cast directly into it. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. Look at this. I tail hooked a perch. How is this even possible? He's about the size of my jerk bait. That was not what I was expecting to do today. I'm sorry, little buddy. All right, well, see ya, buddy. I ran out of time yesterday, so I decided to come back out again today. I changed bodies of water. I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to catch fish here or not, but I decided let's get a little bit more time with this reel before we form our final conclusion. All in all, every single time I cast this thing, I'm getting just a little bit more comfortable with the reel. It's starting to feel less and less like a $55 piece of equipment. The more I use it, the more I like it, which is a really, really good thing when it comes to something this cheap. There's a fish. That was a great bite. It's a nice bass. I love that. I saw a brush pile. This is the sunniest spot on this little pond. Oh, look how red he is. Look at them red lips. My gosh, they're like pink. I've never seen a bass with a mouth that pink. That is weird. I got to get a picture of that. Oh man, that was such a great bite. He knocked slack in my line. God, I love jerkbait fishing, man. I'm so glad I got this rod and reel. He was just a split second away from shaking that hook. Nice little bass, honestly, for a pressured body of water. I'll take a fish like that any day of the week. So there's a brush pile right there and the sun is beating down on this bank. The wind is also coming this way. So that's why I came right here. But I tell you what, man, I'm just getting more and more used to this reel. And I'm kind of forgetting that I'm even doing a review because it just feels so natural in my hands by now. And that's really where I wanted to get before I actually made a conclusion about this. Because at the end of the day, if you don't give a reel a chance, you can't necessarily do a review or a first impressions video. You kind of have to get out there and fish it a good bit to draw any conclusions. The wind is a lot more calm today. It's still blowing at like 10 miles an hour, but that's nowhere near what it was blowing the last several times I've taken this reel out. I will say less wind makes this reel perform quite a lot better. Any wind over about 12 miles an hour seems to have a pretty big impact on this guy right here. I really do think that this clown color is a great color for today. The sun is shining and this water is pretty darn dingy. So this puts off a lot of flash and I'm thinking it allows those bass to hone in on it quite well. Oh, oh, something hit it, something hit it. It's probably a pike, he'll come back. It's like he just bonked the back hook a little bit. I got him. There he is. I bet this is a pike. I'm calling pike. No, it's a big bass. It's a nice one. I just got a, oh my gosh. That's a bonus, that's a bonus. Oh my gosh. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This pressured body of water just an absolute chunk. 
He is so short, but he is so thick. My gosh. Look at that. Just absolutely beautiful fish. My gosh, that's a middle linebacker is what that is. It's that Strike King Clown Jerkbait. I'm having good luck with this guy right here, man. Man, we're just reviewing a reel and we're catching some nice ones. <laughs> he gave me just a mouthful of water. My gosh, he sprayed me. Holy cannoli, I can't believe I've caught two bass right here. And honestly, that second one was an absolute meathead. That thing was fat as all get out. It was probably like 17 inches long, but that thing was so wide, it was like a dump truck, man. I know this video is supposed to be about this reel right here, but I gotta give a quick shout out to this KVD 200 jerkbait. This thing's catching me some fish on a pressured body of water. I'll take it. Anyways, I only have a few more minutes to fish, so I'm gonna get to my conclusion about this reel here in a few minutes. I do have a few important thoughts to share when it comes to buying a reel. But before that, let's see if we can catch just one more bass. Just one more bass would make my day. Let's go. Somebody left a bunch of fishing line here on the bank. I'm gonna pick that up and trash it. This fishing line's terrible to leave on the banks, man. Don't do that. You know, sometimes it falls out of your pocket, sometimes this, that, or the other thing. So it's like, I'm not gonna just draw conclusions, but at the end of the day, really do your best not to leave fishing line at these bodies of water. You know, it can get tangled in a tree, it can get in the water, it'll get around birds' feet, it'll cause a lot of problems. Just put it in the trash, recycle it, whatever you can do. Don't leave it out in mother nature. Mother Nature does not want it. That's enough rambling about that. Let's catch a fish. I will say that I've determined my sweet spot with this reel for casting around when there's a little bit of wind is seven clicks. Now I'm honestly curious how many total clicks there are. One, two, 25, 26, 27, 20, 27. There are 27 total clicks. Seven is the magic number. That's fish. There we are. Yes, sir. Numero three. I guess it doesn't make sense to say numero three. It makes more sense to say numero tres. Yes, sir, that sounds a lot better. This is the dinkiest of all of them, but I'll tell you what, I will take it. Jerk bait, putting in some work. Love it. Little baby. All right, see you, buddy. No, no, no. This is one of the problems with jerkbait fishing from bank. Oh, I've got this massive tree. If I get this back, I am going to go home. There we go. Okay, the jerkbait has been retrieved. So the ultimate question, is this reel worth $55? My answer, I would say yes. I would say this is well worth $55, and quite frankly, I think it's a really good reel. But there is one important thing that I wanted to discuss. When it comes to budget bait casters in general, you have to remember that the reason they cost what they do is because they have lower quality components. So what does that mean for you? Ultimately, it means that even though the reel might work and function in the near term, it probably won't last as long as a higher end reel. Now that's obviously not the end of the world, but I would say the one thing that you gotta think about when it comes to buying a reel is how much are you really gonna fish it and what are you gonna use it for? If you're gonna fish 300 days a year, slap 50 pound braid on it and frog with it, that reel is not gonna last you very long. If you're gonna fish like 10 days a year, put some fluorocarbon on it, throw some spinner baits, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be a great reel for you. So ultimately it's a great reel, but it all comes down to how you're gonna use it. The other watch out points with this reel that I would say is you are gonna need Need to adjust the settings on the go. When it comes to my higher performance reels, reels in the $200 range, I hardly ever adjust my settings and I just keep on casting, no issues. Wind, no wind, it doesn't matter. But for this reel, I had to adjust my settings from time to time. I would say that seven clicks was like that magical number where it was pretty versatile, but all in all, you definitely want to move that down a little bit to gain some distance when it comes to lower wind conditions. But if it's really windy, you might actually go above seven clicks because that wind really impacts this reel. As mentioned, I haven't bought a whole lot of budget reels recently, so I'm not sure how that stacks up against competitors, but at the end of the day, I would expect that most budget reels probably get a little finicky in the wind. I don't think it's something necessarily to be too concerned about. I may do, and quite frankly, I'm really comfortable with it now, and I'm actually starting to really like this reel. Okay, that was quite a lot of rambling. Let me know if I missed anything. Do you have any specific questions? I am definitely not like an engineer, so I don't know about all the components within reels, but I do know this. I've fished a lot of bait casters, and I thought this was pretty darn good for 55 bucks. That's it. I'm done rambling. I'm going to go cook some dinner for for my wife and I. I hope you have a great night. We'll catch you next time.